The Uda Codex is, as I said, richly decorated. There are essentially four, which we may call frontispaces, uh, full page illuminations that are in pairs, face to face, in the codex. And that's one of the things that when we're dealing with secondary sources, you know, we're looking at an image that's been reproduced in a book, we usually don't see the relationship between the images. And that's one of the things that uh, in Cohen's book he emphasized, uh, the relationships between uh, these images that were facing each other and interacting with each other. So we have sort of two pairs of those. And then, um, and I'll be showing you those. There are also our full page um, illuminations uh, for the author pages. These are the, uh, the pages that begin each of the four Gospels and they're dedicated to their writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then there is an incipit page. Incipit just means beginning. So the first letters, the first words of each of the four Gospels uh, is also picked out in a very, very uh, beautiful um, illumination. Uh, we're going to look at the frontispieces. The first one shows a hand of God. And uh, this actually is some influence from the uh, Codex Aurus of Charles the Bald that was at St. Emmeron um, because there were hands of God in a number of these. Some are facing up, some are facing down. A number of the manuscripts that uh, have been uh, associated with this influence. But of course the hand of God is a very old image. Uh, it goes back to the early, early Christian art uh, where this represents uh, God or God the Father. Um, in fact, you can see the, the play of the geometry. You have behind the hand a triangular form uh, suggesting the trinity, and then of course circular forms uh, suggesting the shape of the universe. This has been considered to be a creation page, that the hand of God is creating the world. Facing this, we have the dedication page, and this is where we took our detail of Abbas Uta offering this codex, she's holding the codex in her hand and she's offering it to the virgin and child. Now the compositions are very similar as you can see. Uh, the hand of God is in the circle, the virgin and child is in a circle, and there are sort of half circles uh, above and below. Uh, the frame is uh, laid out the same uh, with, the, uh, with the squares <laughs> in the corners uh, that contain half-length figures. Uh, and then you have on either side of uh, both the hand of God and uh, uh, the Madonna and child, or the virgin and child, uh, you have uh, images, uh, once again half length images of figures uh, in circles. So we're, this is, these are just incredibly complex, so I'm going to show you some of the things about them. We said that it was organized with, very, with geometric forms that are laid out very symmetrically, as you can see. It has lavish use of gold, very ornate patterns. And the interesting thing is that uh, you can let the patterns just get away with you, and yet they do seem to enrich rather than confuse. Now, there are inscriptions all through this in the borders, uh, around the circle, uh, and some of them, they're, they're written in uh, little sections all, all throughout the uh, manuscript. Um, these are sometimes called tituli, or excuse me, tituli, uh, which are the, uh, no, it would be tituli. These are sometimes called tituli, uh, which, you know, would be our, our root for the word titles. Uh, we would probably say they're inscriptions. In other words, there's text. And the texts come from a variety of sources, from the Bible, from various medieval writers. Um, uh, exegesis or commentary by the medieval uh, sources. So whoever did this had a wide and deep theological knowledge and uh, knowledge of, uh, of uh, the medieval commentaries. And I did want to give you at least some of the translations of some of these uh, inscriptions. So um, for the hand of God, it says, God encompassing all time by his everlasting will has from eternity hallowed all things which he created with his word. So as you can see, the uh, inscription tells us uh, that this is in a sense a creation scene. And uh, there is the implication, of course, that uh, when we're saying God, it 
not just God the Father, who have the triangle, which implies uh, the Christian trinity. The Christians uh, believe that God is three persons in one being, and those persons are named God the Father, God the Son, which is uh, the incarnate uh, Christ, and uh, God the Holy Spirit. And we'll we have to come back to this idea when we look at the, the other image. Well, why don't I just go ahead and say it? On the other side, we have the Christ child. And the idea is, and it comes from uh, the Gospel of St. John, the word, uh, yeah, get my Bible verses exactly. Um, blah, 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 blah. Why don't we do that later? <laughs> okay, so uh, we see the creation page. Also, the figures in the corners are all personifications of the four cardinal virtues, uh, justice, prudence, fortitude, temperance. And so there is the implication that uh, the virtues are there at creation, that God is creating with virtue, and that virtue is part of the very essential uh, what, nature of uh, the created universe. Now, here's the facing page, the dedication page, where you see uh, Abbas Uta down in the lower left. And she's offering the codex, which she holds up, which is presumably this codex. Uh, she's offering it to the Virgin Mary and to the Christ child. And this would make sense because the church at the Abbey at uh, Niedermünster is dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Now, something else that uh, Cohen suggested might relate to the nuns was the patterns that you find. Uh, and as you look at this, you may see that some of them uh, look rather like animals. And you may remember that when we looked at uh, a much later uh, fabric piece uh, from Cologne, you had all of those animals woven into the pattern. Well, also, you often have uh, animals uh, sometimes very fantastic animals, uh, embroidered. So we have griffins and lions here. Uh, and you can also see all these different uh, scroll work and decoration, um, which he suggests may remind us of embroidery patterns. And of course, that would be one of the things that the nuns very much uh, would have done, would have been embroidering, say, beautiful altar cloths and vestments. Uh, it would be you know, one of the things that they would do as work uh, for uh, that would be dedicated uh, to the church and to God. Now here we've got my detail uh, where we can uh, take a closer look at the Virgin Mary. She is uh, enthroned in heaven. Uh, she's crowned because Mary is the queen of heaven. And of course she's the queen of heaven because Christ, her son, is the king of heaven. So essentially she's the uh, queen mum <laughs> or the dowager queen. Uh, and uh, Mary is looking toward the Hand of God page. She's also looking up a little. Uh, so she's not looking down at Uta, but she does welcome Uta because her hand is outstretched, it's open, and that is a sign of welcome. Uh, Christ is blessing. The gesture which you see with the two fingers up uh, is uh, a blessing gesture. He'd be making the sign of the cross. Um, so Presumably his blessing is going to Uta. And you'll notice that Uta's head just touches the ring of this circle. Uh, Cohen makes a point about how she approaches the heavenly space, uh, but can, does not enter it. Uh, and how, of course, she is lower than the Virgin Mary. Uh, you know, she, she is uh, you know, paying homage to Mary and the Christ child. Uh, and uh, her subserv her uh, her lesser role, you know, she's obviously not a divine being, um, is, is shown by her placement. One of the things about this, and the, place, the reason we know this is the Uta Gospels, is because of the monograms and the inscriptions. And uh, in this illustration, I think they're clear enough that you can probably make out not all of them, but some of them. And so I've just taken the detail here so that you can see these titulae, uh, see these uh, uh, inscriptions here. And you have a monogram for both Mary and for the abbess. And they're made up of capital letters which form their names. So at the top, uh, we see this big M, 
And if you look closely, you'll also see, uh, sort of intertwined with it, A on one side of the M, uh, and an R also on the one side of the M. They seem to be uh, using the, the same forms for parts of different letters. And then a large I in the center, and then the other side of the M is the other A. So it spells out Maria. And then beside it, flanking it, there, are, there is a little picture of a sun. I don't know if you make that out, but you can probably see the crescent moon. Um, and uh, the inscription says, and this is, I think this is from Book of Wisdom, uh, that uh, bright as the sun, beautiful as the moon. And of course, these are um, titles that are given to Mary. Uh, you may be able to see Stella Maris, which is the star of the sea, another one of Mary's uh, names in praise of her. And you can see some Greek letters there. If you know Greek letters, you know, you'll see uh, a theta, for example. Uh, and it's sort of divided up into two sections. Uh, in, uh, they don't always spell out the words all on one side. They divide them up uh, however they want to for the uh, beauty of the image. Uh, but the Greek letters spell out Theoticus. And Theoticus means God-bearer, or in Latin they would say the mother of God. So that is Mary's chief role. She conceives Christ by the Holy Spirit. And as it was decided at the Council of Ephesus in 431, uh, she is the mother of God. She is not just the mother of the human aspect of Christ, uh, which the human and the divine are inseparable. So Mary bears the Christ child and she bears uh, the being that is, according to Christian theology, uh, both God and man. Also the inscription, the Virgin of Virgins, is there. Down below, in a kind of parallel half circle, we see the monogram for Uta, and we see the dedication here. Uta is not R-U-T-A, -R there's actually four letters. The V and the U uh, in Latin are interchangeable. Uh, we've just made two letters out of them. Uh, and then there's a circle there, which may be interpreted as an O. So sometimes you'll see, see Uta spelled U-O-T-A. Incidentally, the name Uta, where do we get it besides the manuscript? Uh, there are lists of the uh, abbesses of the convent. And so... Um, they can identify her with one of the uh, Utas. The other one is a different generation that are listed as, as abbesses. So we see that her monogram is made up with this V or U, uh, an O, a large T, which forms a kind of taw cross there, and then the A, which uh, is just sort of the reverse of the U. So it's a, a very symmetrical uh, pattern that also has the, the letters of the name. And then I think you can make out the A on to the left of the monogram and the rest of the word abatisa, abbas, uh, on the other side. So this is the abbas, the abatisa, uta. And the inscription would translate, mother of, virgin mother of God, happy because of the divine child, receive the votive offerings of your uta of ready service. So She's offering the, the book, and she is uh, dedicating herself to the service of uh, Christ and his mother. We pointed out how the two pages face each other and relate to each other. Mary conceives the Christ child by the Holy Spirit, according to the Gospel of St. Luke. And also, uh, we've talked about the Trinity a little bit ago. Uh, that hand of God with the triangle behind it implies the Trinity, but also there's the idea that Christ is co-eternal with the Father. Christ is the logos or the verb, and Christ is the word, um, as the Gospel of St. John says. And it is by the word that God creates. So in some um, earlier manuscripts, Carolingian manuscripts from the ninth century, uh, we will actually see Christ uh, as creator. This is a much more sim symbolic um, uh, and cosmic in a sense with all the circular forms, um, a, a creation scene rather than the, the ones where it's very narrative and you see uh, Christ uh, creating everything, you know, Adam and Eve and 
uh, on, on certain days. And those go back actually to early, to early Christian manuscripts. Um, but the idea that Christ is co-eternal, um, the idea that Mary conceives by the Holy Spirit, and then of course this relates over uh, to the other side, to the hand of God, and to the idea of the Trinity. And certainly one of the major parallels you're seeing here, we said that there was a kind of parallel in the way the uh, inscriptions and the monograms were play Mary and Uta were placed in the half circle. There is a kind of parallel of uh, duty, of rule. Uta is the abbess. She rules in her abbey as Mary rules in heaven, or as Christ rules in heaven, but here we're making a, a female parallel. Uh, and Uta then serves as a kind of mother to her nuns, uh, just as Mary serves as a kind of mother not only to the Christ child, uh, but to all of mankind. <laughs>